Welcome to High Level Bitcoin. In this video, I will demonstrate a service called BitClouds. BitClouds lets you rent a virtual machine on an internet server using Bitcoin. You make a tiny Bitcoin payment, get some login credentials, and sign into your virtual machine using a secure shell. Once you log in, you can do basically anything in the virtual machine that you can do on a regular computer. Install software, test networking stuff, buy things with Bitcoin, set up a public website, whatever you want. I personally find BitClouds very useful for testing software. It's very cheap to rent a virtual machine, less than a penny per hour at current Bitcoin prices. When I use BitClouds to test software, I don't have to worry that I'll mess something up on my regular computer. So if I want to try something new, I'll try it on BitClouds first, where if I break something, I just have to create a new virtual machine for a few cents to get going again. Once I've got my software set up the way I like, I can then do the same process on my regular computer now that I know what I'm doing a little better. I also use BitClouds for browsing the web if I'm in a place with low internet speed. Instead of connecting to and downloading many different pages, I can connect to BitClouds and then my computer only has to worry about downloading one stream of data. BitClouds handles the rest with high-speed internet and remote desktop software. In today's video, I will show you how to create a virtual machine on BitClouds with the Debian operating system installed. And then, I'll show you how to use remote desktop software to manage your virtual machine with a graphical user interface. So, let's get started. First, open up a Windows terminal. Execute the command curl https bitclouds.sh slash create slash Debian. You can find documentation about what this command does at the BitClouds website, bitclouds.sh. In short, this command creates a new cloud machine with a popular Linux-based operating system called Debian pre-installed on the machine. After you've executed the command to create the cloud machine, you will receive a reply from BitClouds containing the name of the cloud machine it's creating for you and an invoice for a payment in Bitcoin. This invoice is encoded as a Lightning Network invoice, so make sure you have some Bitcoins in a Lightning wallet, otherwise you won't be able to pay the invoice. In my case, I am paying using a Lightning wallet on Android called BLW, which stands for Bitcoin Lightning Wallet. Now, I haven't paid yet, so BitClouds has not created a new cloud machine for me yet. Let me show you what happens if I look up the status of my cloud machine before paying the invoice. First, I type curl https bitclouds.sh slash status, and then the name of my cloud machine. Again, you can find a documentation about what this command does at the BitClouds website, bitclouds.sh. I hit enter, and BitClouds will tell me the status of my cloud machine. See? BitCloud says they are still waiting for my payment, because I haven't paid yet. Now let's pay. First, I will copy the Lightning invoice that BitClouds created for me a few moments ago. I highlight the invoice, and copy. Now I will use a website called theqrcodegenerator.com to turn my invoice into a QR code so that my wallet can scan it. Right now, I am scanning the QR code with my wallet and paying it, but you can't see that because I don't have one of those fancy screen capture devices on my phone. And now the invoice has been paid. Let's check the status of the cloud machine now. curl https bitclouds.sh slash status slash the name of my cloud machine. Now, BitClouds returns to me the IP address where my cloud machine can be accessed and the password I will use to log in. Note that BitClouds does not currently tell you what your cloud machine's username is, but the standard username in Debian is root, so we'll use that. Also, note that BitClouds tells me I have six hours of time to use on this machine. I can extend that using the top-up command to pay for more time. Check out the BitClouds website for more information about topping up. BitClouds.sh Let's log in to the cloud machine. To do this, we'll use a command called SSH. SSH means secure shell. It's secure because it uses encryption, and it's called a shell because it looks relatively simple but hides a lot of complexity. A shell looks like just a black box to type text in, but it can run any program in your computer. It has a simple outward appearance, like a seashell or a turtle shell, but there's deep complexity inside. 
Anyway, you can log into your cloud machine by typing SSH, then the word root, the symbol at, and the IP address given to you by BitClouds. The command SSH will run your secure shell program to connect to another computer. Root is your username, and the IP address is the location of your cloud machine on the internet. Enter yes when Windows asks you if you want to connect. Next, enter exactly the password given to you by BitClouds. Note that on this terminal window, you don't get to see the password when you type it. This is to protect your privacy. I know it looks like something went wrong and nothing got typed, but the password is in there just fine. Hit enter. The first thing our cloud machine will ask us to do is set up a new password so that other people can't get in. Make sure you set a secure password and then confirm it. Again, I know it looks like I'm not typing anything here, but I am. Debian just doesn't show what I'm typing to protect my privacy. Okay, we've logged into Debian. I will use the command clear to clean up all of the stuff we just did and get a nice empty terminal. I may use the clear command throughout the rest of this video, so don't be surprised if the terminal occasionally gets emptied. Be aware that Debian is a lot like other Linux-based computers in that its basic mode is text only. There's no graphical user interface other than the text you see on screen. However, since this is a video, and text-only terminals like this one aren't very visually appealing, the next thing I will do is install a graphical user interface so that we can all see what I'm doing. I will first update and upgrade my cloud machine using the commands apt update y and apt upgrade y. apt is short for aptitude, which is an important program in Debian which is used for installing programs. It's kind of an app store for Linux systems such as Debian. The dash y part tells it to hit yes if any confirmation windows appear. If you're installing or updating a large file, sometimes Debian will tell you how much space you're about to use and ask you to confirm that you really want to do that, and in this case I do, so I'll just tell it to say yes with the dash y flag. By the way, all the commands and instructions you need to follow this video are included in the video description, so check that out for more details. You may have noticed a lot of text flying by after I typed in my last command. That's okay, that's just how Debian shows you what it's doing, so that if there are any errors, you have a record of what led up to the error. Debian shows you a lot of stuff like that when you're using text-only mode to help with debugging in case something goes wrong. Next, I will tell Aptitude to run a function called auto-remove. Auto-remove gets rid of any extra software which isn't needed by any of the programs I have installed. I like to do that to keep things tidy. When I start experimenting with software, I don't want any software that I'm not currently using to get in the way of my experiment or mess up a configuration file or something. I want to start fresh every time, so I use auto-remove to create a blank slate. Now I'll install a piece of graphical desktop software called XFCE4. XFCE stands for XForms Common Environment. It's a popular piece of desktop software that was originally created using an old program called XForms. I'm installing version 4 of XFCE. XFCE4 is a lightweight desktop program and will work just fine for showing the screen of my, of my cloud machine. Be aware that one of the things that makes Debian interesting is that if you don't need a graphical desktop like Windows has, you don't need to install one. There are a lot of devices that need an operating system but don't have a screen, like file servers. On a file server, you don't need a graphical desktop because you probably don't even have a screen, so Debian gives you a choice of whether to install a desktop or not. In this case, I'll install one. Next, I'll install a program called Tiger VNC, standalone server. Tiger VNC is popular remote desktop software. By the way, if you forget to type in the dash Y flag after you type your command, no worries, just type the letter Y after the command prompt asks you, asks you if you want to continue, and then hit enter. The VNC in the name of Tiger VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing, because I'm obviously computing over a network, and this will create a link between my computer here at home and the remote computer I'll be working on, which is called a virtual machine since it's in the cloud. Keep in mind that I'm currently logged into my cloud machine remotely. It's off in a server room somewhere far away, and I'm giving it commands from the comfort of my home. So, even once my cloud machine has a desktop running on it, I still won't be able to view it unless I use remote desktop software. Tiger VNC lets me view what's happening on my cloud machine and control it without having to be present in the same room as it. 
Tiger VNC standalone server also needs one other thing to work in my situation. An extension called Tiger VNC Common. This extension adds a few common utilities and makes it easier to access my remote desktop by setting a password and logging in using that. I will also take this opportunity to install a program called Xterm. The word term in Xterm stands for terminal, which is one of the names for Debian's shell, or command prompt. I will probably use the terminal later to install programs. The X in Xterm means the terminal shows up in its own dedicated window instead of taking up the whole screen. In Debian, a lot of programs that show up in a window start with X because there was an early window manager called the X window system that was very popular on Linux computers, and programs that were written to work with the X window system were often called X programs. There's a few more things I need to do to view my desktop. I need to configure my remote desktop software, reboot the computer so that the desktop software starts running, start Tiger VNC so that I can connect to my newly installed graphical desktop, install Tiger VNC on my home computer, and then, finally, after all that, I can log into this machine and see a graphical user interface. Let's start with configuring the remote desktop software, because that's very easy, as long as you copy-paste the right command. All I need to do is execute the following command, which you can find in the video description below. Echo localhost equals no right arrow right arrow forward slash etc forward slash vnc.conf. Make sure you copy paste that because there are single quotes and double quotes and it won't work unless you get it right the first time. If you mess up and try to do it a second time, that will also break something, so don't do that. Okay, so what does all that gobbledygook mean? Well, the last part, vnc.conf, is the configuration file for Tiger VNC. It's located in a directory called etc, which is where Debian stores system configuration files and other system data. A directory is the term Debian uses for a place where files are stored. The equivalent term in Windows is a folder. The echo command tells Debian to add a line of text somewhere, and the arrows tell it where to add that text. Altogether, it's telling Debian to add the line localhost equals no to the configuration file for Tiger VNC. What does localhost equals no mean? Well, that part tells Tiger VNC not to look for incoming connections from another user on the same cloud machine it's installed on, which is sometimes called the local host. Instead of looking for connections from the same machine it's installed on, Tiger VNC will look for connections from a remote user, me because, like I said earlier, I'm doing this whole thing remotely from my home. Next, we'll shut down using the shutdown command. The dash R flag tells Debian to reboot after shutting down, and the word now means do it right away. Notice that as soon as I hit enter, the cloud machine turns off, and that severs my connection to it. I'll wait about 10 seconds while it reboots, and then I'll log in again. We've got to log in one more time to the text-only version of the cloud machine to start our remote desktop server. After that, we can log in using Tiger VNC, and then we'll be in graphical mode. Yay! Okay, so in order to log in, I need to know the IP address of my cloud machine, and I've kind of forgotten what it was. Luckily, I can find that out again just by looking at my terminal. It tells me what address I was connected to when my connection was severed. Now let's log in. SSH root at that IP address. Type in the password you created before, and you're back in. Now, run your remote desktop software using the command VNC server. It will now ask you for a password. I'll use the same one I'm using to log in via Secure Shell. Reconfirm it, and then type the letter N when Tiger VNC asks you if you want to create a password for read-only mode. We don't need to do that because we don't want to use read-only mode. We want to actually be able to modify stuff on our computer, like we're really sitting in front of it. So type the letter N and hit Enter. Great, now your server is set up properly. Next, enter this command, vnc server list. You need to know the RFB port number in order to view the remote desktop using your home computer. Now that you see what the number is, let's install Tiger VNC on our home computer. Go to tigervnc.org, and under downloads, click GitHub release page. Do you see where it says binaries are available from bin tray? Click that link. This is where you can download Tiger VNC for your home computer. It's got versions for several operating systems, but I'm using Windows, so I will need the .exe file. Assuming you have a modern computer, you will need the version with a 64 in it, 
because almost all modern computers are 64-bit computers. Also note that there's two types of Tiger VNC software here. The server, which we've already installed on our cloud machine, is called Tiger VNC 64 on this page. The viewer, which we will use to view and control the remote machine, is called VNC Viewer 64. So let's download that one. Once it is downloaded, double click it to run it. It will prompt you to connect to the remote machine. To do this, you will first need to enter the IP address of your remote machine. I've forgotten again what it was, but there is another way to find out. All I need to do is use the curl command to check the status of my cloud machine. BitClouds will tell me what its IP address is when it tells me its status. If you can't remember what the name of your cloud machine is, just check your Windows command prompt again. It shows you the name of whatever machine you are logged into right there on the left. So I will use that name to say curl https bitclouds.sh slash status slash that name, and bitclouds will then tell me the IP address of my machine. Copy paste that IP address into VNC Viewer, then add a colon. Then add the RFB port number that we saw earlier. It should still be visible in your Windows terminal. Once you've clicked connect, enter your password, and voila! Now we've got a virtual Debian machine in the cloud. We can see what's happening on it, install software, and use it for testing. Make sure you occasionally check how many hours you have left, and pay to top up your time, otherwise your cloud machine will be deleted. Any software you've installed in it will be removed, and any data you've saved on it will be erased. You probably don't want that, so either plan to only use it for short tests, or plan to top it up and keep its balance filled. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Make sure to check out bitclouds.sh for more information. And if you like this video, like it, subscribe it, and hit the bell to receive notifications. I hope to release more videos soon about other software projects in the Bitcoin space, so stay tuned.